Ah, yeah. Welcome back to the channel. So, Citroen C1. And then, in this box, we have something that I purchased about 18 months ago, but I haven't got around to doing yet. Um, that is pretty much how the box came. It was ripped when it arrived, and I haven't even looked inside to make sure that everything is actually there. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And upon closer inspection, we can see that we do have an AMR 500 supercharger with a serpentine pulley on it, a serpentine belt, and some pipes and shit. And there should be a bracket to mount said supercharger. Yes. There is a bracket to mount the supercharger already attached to the supercharger. So what we've got, we've got, this is to go on the intake to the supercharger. This is to come out of the supercharger. This is to perfectly regulate the boost, absolutely perfectly. Um, and then some pipes just to connect it up and a belt to make it work. This is about as crude as it gets. It's probably gonna boost creep really badly with that. It's, it's probably gonna, as soon as I let off the throttle, and that's still spinning, it's gonna put loads of pressure. It might work. We'll see what happens. Right, to put it on, I need to take the bumper off, but I've already showed you a video of that, so I'll do YouTube magic, watch this. Yes. So, the supercharger itself mounts to them two lugs, and the first thing that we'll notice is that we have got an oxygen sensor in the way of this. Um, I'm gonna give myself some better access. I'm gonna remove this crash bar, like so. And also, what I have done is, I have moved this oxygen sensor and put it onto that bung, and I've put the bung out of that into the, which is probably not advisable because this joint's a flexible joint and it's not 100% sealed, which is gonna mess up the readings. But this car's on its last legs, it's rotten, so, I was going to install this properly and I was going to map it in and stuff like that, but there's just no point. When it comes to MOT time, this car is dead. So either it will blow up on it or it won't blow up. So yeah, what I've done is, like I said, I've moved this oversized but completely necessary horn system and I've moved this oxygen sensor from there to there to give me the room that I need to place the supercharger in. And the supercharger mounts there. Now, anyone who knows anything about maths and leverage will be seeing quite a big problem there, which is that that little mount there, although that those bolts are offset, so it can't twist on the bolts, it's still a lot of weight hung on that bracket and on them little lugs, so they could break off. Now, ideally, it should be put that on there and then amount going from this all here possibly to this or the, any of them put around there somehow but yeah i'm not doing that so let's mount the shitter yes as if by magic we are mounted in the oem position for the supercharger this is actually where the aircon pump would be if this had aircon so now I need to fit this belt, and if we look at something, I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but that is not lined up particularly well. And the belt is gonna run around here and then to that and then back under there, I think. I'm just gonna put it on and see what happens. And with that nice and carefully fitted, we can see, I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but we can see that the belt is, it, it's going this way. Well, fuck it, let's just turn it on and see if it comes off. Yes! And as you can see, that worked absolutely perfectly. It's like it's factory fitted. So the belt didn't come off and take my eye out, but I was expecting it to join from the bottom and then blow out from the top but it actually sucks from the and um, that is where i've got to work out where all this pipe work fixed because i think that this goes must go like that or something like that but for me that's a job for another day because it's freezing and i've had enough 
but for you it's not going to be it's, it's just going to go dark and then come back on another day like magic and as if by magic it is now another day and it is still freezing yes and since last touching it a couple of days ago i've been thinking about how this supercharger is actually mounted i'm not massively happy about the belt the angle of the belt coming that way and i'm not i'm definitely not happy about it being mounted just on one end like that so really it wants moving across them all the elongating sliding across and a bracket making from the up to somewhere else somehow and we have just rolled over into 2026 so new year new me and all that lot i'm just going to leave it exactly as it is fuck it and so i need to look at how this jigsaw puzzle fits into the but first i need to put this back on to make sure that i don't put that in the way of that yes yes and so this one i'm assuming goes something like that where it fits completely perfectly and as you can see here there is a witness mark to line it up to where the belt has been touching it every now and then in a previous life so yeah that goes there and then i can only assume that this goes on next somewhere around there now i need to modify this because the guy i got this off never got around to mapping it in so he just ran this with no spring in it so it was open until he was going to get it mapped but he never got it mapped now i'm not going to get it mapped either because as i said this car hasn't got long left and i'm not going to spend a few hundred quid mapping it for about a month if that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a spring in but i'm going to cut the spring down so it's not boosting that much now obviously if you're going to put a supercharger on you're going to go to the effort and doing it properly you're going to map it in but i'm just going to see what happens if i don't and so i need to modify this so first i need to set the top off and then yes this spring actually pushes this closed this plunger in there with an amount of force preset by the tension of this spring and the adjustment which is there so you can you can actually wind that spring up a bit tighter now what i'm going to do is i'm going to perfectly calibrate this to run low boost and if i perfectly measure this by doing it big enough so it's putting some pressure on but not a lot of pressure and then cut it maybe there which is probably a bit too weak now i discovered that this spring is far too strong to cut with cheap side cutters yes perfect and then now i'll turn that over because that's got like a bit more of a cut so it can't fall out then we put this on then this on and then this back on at an orientation where that pipe comes out in the right direction probably that way and now i just need to put the screws back in that hold it all together better and now i've also put that back in with a bit of ptfe around it because this needs plumbing in to somewhat one of these back lines so that when i let off the throttle it opens this with vacuum pressure so basically if i suck on that this opens as well like a dump valve well it is a dump valve but yeah now i need to put that somewhere around there which i have now done and if we look carefully we can see that it's perfectly fitted using the engine mounting to brace it so that's not going anywhere is it so next I need to fit this piece from there to the intake but first I need to remove this which is from another video and place it carefully in there and now that it is replaced with this 
and all these clips beautifully done are all nipped up that is the boosted side complete obviously i need to run this to one of these back lines so now i need to put the intake on yes so that just appears to mount nice and simply like that and i can only assume that it is actually an engineered interference fit with the bumper to hold it in place so that is pretty much installed that should be all there is to it apart from obviously i need to install this onto here nice and carefully and now we're ready to start and see what happens yes i knew exactly what was probably going to happen but i chose to completely ignore it and now i have to take it off and alter the mount anyway which i have now done so if we look really closely we can see that i have perfectly and accurately machined that to within a thousandth of a millimeter with a die grinder and now i've got to put it all back on again and now we are at that point where it is all back together again so let's try again <laughs> And the belt hasn't come off yet, so I think it's time to throw the bump back on and then try and drive it. And now we are all lovingly back together, so it's time to go and drive it and see if it blows up. very noisy it's got an audible warning so if the belt comes off i'll know about it because it'll shut up also i don't know if it's massively faster it feels a bit quicker actually it doesn't feel like ridiculously fast or anything but it's got now i can feel it's got a load of torque compared to what it had it is actually a little bit more lively definitely Yes, and apart from the engine management line, it actually survived. So, for now, I'm going to leave that here. Um, there probably will be future videos messing about and trying to tinker with this, but that's all for this one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the usual shit. And I'll see you next time.